A2A adenosine receptor and its ligands. A2A receptor with antagonist, a gray T4 lysozyme fused for crystallization. A2A receptor is not polymet-related at the C-terminus. Instead, the helix 8 in magenta is stabilized by interactions with the helix 1 in red. There are four disulfide bonds in yellow at the extracellular surface. Three of them connect the extracellular loop 1 in red and 2 in yellow. There is one intralip bond within the extracellular loop 3 in blue. The four disulfide bonds form a rigid, open structure exposing the ligand binding cavity. Stable structure of extracellular loops is not affected by small ligands. They changes only when the large agonist of UK 432097 binds as shown in primary colors. Next is about A2A receptor conformational change. Antagonist bound form in red, agonist bound form in blue. TM6 interacts with ribose of the ligand adenosine. The interaction rotates and tilts the TM6 at the cytoplasmic side. TM5 forms a bulge upon agonist binding as shown in red. TM7 makes a seesaw movement and shifts inward at cytoplasmic side by agonist binding as shown in red. It also interacts with the ribose of adenosine. TM3 moves upward to accommodate the ribose upon agonist binding as shown in red. Hydrogen bonds at cytoplasmic face stabilize the inactive conformation. Aspartic acid 101 of D slush ERY motif of TM3 in orange makes hydrogen bond with tyrosine 112 of the second intracellular loop helix in yellow and 3 on in 41 of TM2 in red. Inverse agonist antibody in brown stabilizes the inactive conformation with additional hydrogen bonds to the extended ICL3 in green and TM6 in blue. Inverse agonist antibody is positioned at orange TM2 and blue TM7. Fixing the positions of yellow TM3, cyan TM6, and blue TM7 conformation. In comparison, a grinist antibody of beta 2 adrenergic receptor is positioned at TM3 in yellow and TM6 in blue.